believe the Lord for a good week for you. I want to talk this morning about fighting disappointment. Last week we talked about fighting the enemy. That was a different one if you remember part of it. But it's true, we do fight the devil, we fight the enemy. And, but there's other wars that we battle in our life. We battle discouragement. We battle disappointment. What are you battling this week? What have you battled this week? Many times, if you're like me, sometimes we reminisce, sometimes wrongly. We play over in our minds some of the failures that we've been through or we've experienced. We've been through, uh, we play over some of the defeats, disappointments. We start to think at different times, uh, what if I would have done it a little differently? What if I would have maybe taken this fork or this road? What if I would have handled the situation a little differently? Maybe I'd have a better outcome. Well, Paul was very clear in Philippians. He said it this way, this way, forget what is behind and I press on toward what God has for me in the future. Here's what I want to say to you, my brother, my sister. You can't do anything about yesterday. You can't do anything about the mistakes, the things that slip through your hands, your fingers. Oh, my brother, you got a concert tomorrow, is that right? At 7.30? Where's it at? Northeastern North University? Okay. What's the address? Okay, we'll Google it. Northeastern University. Tomorrow you're going to have the guitar. Hey, feel free to support him. Our brother there, wave your hand. He's a, he's a professor, a teacher there. So God bless you. 7.30 tomorrow. Now where was I at? Listen, we go through things. We have challenges. We fight disappointment. But God wants to help you where you're at today. My brother, my sister, your life isn't over. Your life, as a matter of fact, God wants to work in your life in a, in a special way. Let me look at the scripture here. One verse, usually we have two or three, but here we go. Overcoming uh, disappointment. But the man who received one talent, Matthew 25, verse 18, went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. If you wonder where this text comes from, it comes, it's called the parable of the talents. Parable of the money. Three different people, it's a parable, it's a story. Uh, it, it, was, it was being shared to try to introduce us to, to a thought to, to help us to understand the kingdom of God. It talked about one person received one set of, 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 of uh, talents or, or money or, um, or, or, or some kind of giftings. Another was two and another was one. The story goes like this, that the person that was given five, they doubled it and they uh, secured five more. The one that had two, they brought back and gave their master two more. They doubled it. But the one who had one talent, you've heard me if you've been around a while, I've shared along this subject a few times in different ways. I, I, I like to explore and looking at sometimes texts in, in different uh, uh, viewpoints, especially when you're going through things in your life. But this person probably was a little discouraged in life. The parable of the one talent man or, or woman. Maybe some things didn't work out for them as well as they wanted. This person gets kind of uh, the bad rap in this story. This person is the one that kind of lost out. And it says that they took what was given to them and they hid it in the ground. They buried it. I want to look at this verse 
to help you and I. How do we fight discouragement? How can we fight against disappointment? The failures in your life. If you lived life at all, you know you're going to fail. You are. Failures are a part of our life. As a matter of fact, none of us are perfect. We're, we're going to go through things. We're going to have struggles. But we can overcome these things. There's a few things that I see where this person probably could have done better. But I, I guess I, I like this person the longer I'm living. And I don't look at him as a failure. I just look at him that maybe he could have done it a little better. Oh, I'm happy for the person that doubled it. The five, producing five, that's good. It seems like those people are all around. I'm happy for the person that took their two and came back and two more, successful. But maybe I see myself in this individual. So, something that maybe went wrong in their life, something that happened, and they kind of found disappointment. They kind of found some things that they wish they could change. You can't change yesterday, but listen, my brother, my sister, you can live life today. Don't live life in the rear view mirror. No, Joel says it good this way, and I only bring it up maybe once uh, every few years, but I, I remember this, one of Joel, Joel's earlier teachings where it says, listen, you know, as you're, as you're moving in life and you're driving that vehicle, as you're going in life, you know, you can look in that small mirror. You need it. It's, it's good. It's good to have a rear view mirror. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to. So there's nothing wrong with reflection. But the windshield in front of you, the windshield, uh, that is a much bigger picture. And that's where you have your eyes on the most. There's nothing wrong time to time, and you got to do that. But let me tell you, my brother, my sister, don't keep looking behind. Don't keep second-guessing yourself. Don't keep beating up on yourself on the things that didn't work out. Well, let me go. Where did this person go wrong? Now, I, we're saying that because we're learning from how this person didn't have a good today or tomorrow. He said this, he received... So he received also, what I want to say initially is, you have something to offer right where you're at. In spite of maybe the lack, in spite of maybe not feeling like you're as, as worth as much, you're older, maybe you're, you're, you get tired or whatever, you still have received what God has given you. Maybe you don't have all the money you want. Whatever it may be. Whatever shortage you have in your life. This person didn't get the five. He was in line. He didn't get five. He didn't get two. He got one. So he started out as a deficit, I'm sure, already. Some of you know how that is when you had a relationship that maybe something happened or, or a job situation. You start off and you're, you, you begin your week and not as good the way you see it to someone else. But here we go. He went off. And this is just three quick thoughts for you and I. We're not going to be long. I just want to drop something in your heart how you can somehow overcome disappointment, discouragement. What not to do? Well, you know what he did? He went off. What do you mean by that? Well, I kind of looked it up, and to, to, going off means to go away. Leave. To undo decline or deterioration. What did he do? It seems like he probably was faced with something, and he just kind of, he, he didn't give it thought. He just kind of took the turn, and he kind of hit himself. Here's what I want to say. When you're hurting... Don't seclude yourself. When you're hurting, sometimes when we're hurting, what do we do? The first thing many times people do is they drop out in life. They drop out of their social circles. They, they drop out of uh, some things, their support. Listen, that could be probably the worst thing you can do. Sometimes you're ashamed. You're ashamed of going through something. You're ashamed of a, of a loss or something that happened in your life. Listen, my brother, my sister, 
If you are going to overcome disappointment, if you are going to overcome failure, if you're going to get back in the game, if you're going to stand up again, and you are called to stand up again, you're called to live life again, my brother, my sister. Listen, listen, you may have something that didn't go right, but it doesn't mean tomorrow is not going to work for you. Here's what I want to say to you. The enemy is trying to keep you down. God's trying to get you to keep going forward and live your life the way he's called you. Listen, here we go. He, he went off. He, he kind of just said, okay, I only got one, and I got to protect what I have, what's remaining. I got to protect that, what's, you know, what happens if it don't work? And it would be easy for you, even your final days on this earth, it would be easy wherever you're at in your journey, your life, to, to play it too safe, to, to, to kind of hide and to, to say, well, this is my lot. God doesn't want you to live that way. God has something for you. Listen, my brother, my sister, here's what I thought of when we were in the presence of the Lord and I, and I was there worshiping. A second in the presence of God is probably the best thing you could have all week long. I was thinking, if I could just be here a little longer, I know that God could deposit something in my life. It's better than anything that what the world has to offer. So here's what I'm going to say to you. You don't know what God's going to do in your life tomorrow. Listen, you don't know what breakthrough God can bring your way. So don't spend it in being defeated today. You don't know what God has for you. Here's what I want to say. In Christ, He can open a door for you. He can do something that no man can do. So here's what I want to say. He went off. Don't go off. Don't hide yourself. Don't, don't, don't think it isn't worth it and, 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 and somehow play it where... I got I to gotta go and, no, run to what God has for you and the things you got. The second thing that I see, he dug a hole. What do you mean he dug a hole? Think about it. You know, this person used energies. He used the limited energies he had to try to, he, really, he made it worse. Let's say you're angry with someone. Don't stay angry. It's not worth it. Let's say, let's say something's not going right with you. Don't keep digging the hole and making it deeper. What he did is he, he went and he dug a hole. It seems like every day in our life there's challenges, there are battles we face. Let's not make it any deeper. Here's what I want to say. If you're going to use your, en if you're going to use your energy, use your energy to build bridges. Use your energy to, to seek forgiveness and to be at peace with all man. Here's what I want to say. The enemy is trying to stir you up. The enemy is trying to get you to, to, for it to that. It's not going to work. It's not going to last. But here's what God wants you to do. God wants to see your future the way he sees it. And wherever you're at, you got a bright future because you have God. And with God, he knows no loss. With God, he knows no defeat. So it's only, it only goes higher. So here's what I want to say. He went off, he dug a hole. Don't dig a hole. Sometimes, or I don't know or if you're like me or in relationships. Let's say if me and Sue get in a spat. Well, you know, she's the one that has always wronged me. And I'm the, always the innocent party. But let's say we get it. You know, sometimes as prideful people, it would be easy for me to say, no, and, and dig in, and I'm not going to uh, uh, bridge the gap. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. She needs to say I'm sorry to me. Of course, I'm the victim here. No. Uh, come on, come on, man. Yeah, help me out. But listen, but you know what? That's foolish. When you wake up the next day, or when you look at it in different light, listen, listen, there's no room for that. Get it behind you. Listen, what I'm saying is, is the enemy wants to get you dug in in your problems. You can step out of your problems very easily. Listen, you know that story that I used to do. I don't do that anymore. 
I'm a little more sophisticated. No, I'm joking. Remember that uh, where, where the donkey fell into a, a pit? And he, there was a hole, and you know, a, a big hole, and the donkey fell in. Well, it seems like when, you, when you're down in life, it seems like life has a way of, of um, making it worse. That's why my dad in the bakery business, we come to the bakery business, he would always say, listen, if things are clean, if you had the water measured, if the yeast was all measured ahead of time in the refrigerator and, and your doughs were all measured, you could go in there tired or, or with a hangover and you could still have a good, back in those days, and you could still have a good day because everything is kind of prepared ahead of time. So he, that's the way we were raised. We had seven kids. We worked in the bakery business since uh, toddlers. So he kind of taught me preparation was big in life. Well, but here's what this person, the, the donkey fell in the, the hole. And it seems like when things aren't going right, it can keep, you know, it can keep at times. But that's not what God has called his children to. God has called you to rise up out of your trouble. God has called you to rise up. So here we go. Okay, I'll do it. So I, I'm the donkey and, and someone is, uh, c come here, young man. Hurry, come here. Where's your shovel? Where's your, okay. okay. Just start putting dirt on my back. Start throwing dirt. I'm in a hole, right? I'm in a hole. And, and here's the enemy. Here's your, your people that don't like you. What are they doing? They're shoveling dirt. They're trying to bury you, right? And that's what the world wants to do, bury you. But here's what happens. This donkey, this child of God, instead of being buried and being weighed down with all the things, here's what the donkey did. The dirt, he used the troubles of life. And he, he, he stomped him and he started to get out of the hole. And then he came up a little more and then he kept on throwing dirt on me. So here's what the donkey would do. He would, sh he would, he would sh brush the dirt off his back. Are you going to brush off the things that come your way this week? So no, the, the, don't let it stick to you. You can let anger, hatred stick to your life. Okay, go sit down. You can let all those things weigh you down or you can shake them and step up. So here's what this person did. Here's what you're going to do this week. The troubles, the things in life that weigh you down. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, the things in life do come. There's, there's sicknesses, there's harshness, there's things that, that come in our life. But here's what we're going to do as a child of God. We're going to take these things, we're going to shake them off, and we're going to step up, and we're going to step up. Then finally, here's what this donkey did. So much dirt was thrown on him. Have you had a lot thrown your way this week? Have you had a lot come your way? Listen, this used to the troubles of life. And Jesus said we are going to have troubles in this life. The, the hurts, the pains, use them and not to get us bitter, not to grow bitter at old age, not to hate someone, not to be vi uh, uh, not to get them back, not to, not to hurt people. No, we're going to, in our own age, grow cleaner. We're going to grow sweeter. We're going to grow more loving. And instead of life doing it to us, we're going to step up. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to step out uh, at the end of the day. So the pit, the pit that the enemy tried to get you to drown your life, to ruin your life, the pit that you fell into, maybe it's because you're just weren't as smart when you were younger. Maybe you did some wrong. You fell in a pit. And then someone is coming along, the devil, the enemy, your friends, whatever, they try to bury you. But what you're going to do, you're going to shake off the troubles of life and you're going to step up. And eventually, this may happen to you this week. Eventually, all these things are going to be a platform and it's not going to be a, a, a something God's going to use your trouble as a platform and you're going to step up and use those things and you're going to get out and be free. So here's what I want to say to you. Here's what I want to say to you. 
Don't let life do you in. Don't allow your disappointments to bury you. Don't allow the troubles of life, the relationships in this life. Don't allow your past journey, the things that you look back where you say, I could have done better. No, what you're going to do is use all the things in your life all things work together for the good in the hands of God. God takes your mistakes. God takes your life and he applies the blood of Jesus. It's called redeeming. It's called redemption. And he brings good out of all the evil, all the things that the enemy has meant for evil in your life. And now you're going to use that as a testimony, a platform to bring light into a dark world, to, to be the person that God has called you, and you're going to step up and be the child of God that he's called you to. My brother, my sister, do you got a good life? Yes, you do. You know it's that season, uh, it, 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 the wonderful life. He thought he lost all. He thought that nothing was working out. Even his, his, uh, his, his brother lost the savings or what he needed. Things were stolen, he felt, from him. He felt like he was at a disadvantage. He soon found out that he was a rich man after all. What I'm saying to you, you've got richness in your life. You can be thankful this Thanksgiving season, or you can turn inward and say, I wish I had it different. I wish I had more. I wish I didn't go through that. Or you could say, by the grace of God, I am who I am, and God isn't done with me. He's helping me where I'm at today, and he's working in my life today. My brother, my sister, do you got a good life? I think you do. Could you made some uh, a different decision? Sure, we all could have. But there's much more right with you than there is wrong with you. As a matter of fact, you're serving God today. Listen, that's a big thing. You're on the long, narrow road. It's a tough road. It's the journey. It, 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 it's, it's the tough, but you're on it. Thank God that you're on this long, narrow road, and few find themselves there. And you're on that road. You're a child of God. You've said yes to him. I'd rather be in your shoes than a lot of other people's shoes because you said yes to Jesus. And let me tell you, why are you talking so fast, Amanda? Let me tell you something. I had to get that side in. Let me tell you something. Your best days are still right out in front of you. I know it may sound like a slogan, but in Christ, who knows what tomorrow holds for you? Who knows what door God can do? Who knows what redemption? When Jesus was in the grave, and I'm done, when Jesus was in the grave, the world thought they won. Satan thought he had him. Finally, he tried to get him back in, in, in the early days. He tried to get him as a child and the, the two-year-old. He tried to kill him then. He, all those under two. He tried to get him in the temptation. Jump off or do this. He tried to ruin his life. None of it worked. The enemy has tried a lot and thrown everything at you at the kitchen sink. But you're still standing. The enemy's thrown a lot at you, but you're here today, the sound of his voice, and you're saying yes to God today. Here's what I want to say to you, my brother, my sister. Can you, in the quietness, say thank you, Jesus, for the life you've given me? Can you be like... After you go, I did some socials, like that wonderful life, what, James Stewart, and say, okay, God, it is a good life. I'm thankful that I have breath today. 
I'm thankful that I'm still standing today. And what the enemy has meant for evil, you've turned around for my good. Here's what I would do if I was you. I would count your blessings this week. I would say, thank you, Lord. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm so thankful that I'm a little bit farther than I should be. God is on your side. And the enemy does not have a chance. The blood over your life will win out at the end of the day. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the covering. The covering. The covering is big. So God, cover your people this week. We only got one gifting. It's not a lot, it seems like. We've only been given a little. We only seems like we only have a little in our life. But we're going to say thank you for what we have, what you've given us. And we love you, Lord. Feel free to repeat this. Feel free to... Joel has confessions and different things, but listen, this is a, what we do at the end of this service. We embrace and confess our need for Christ, feel free to repeat, Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless your people, I pray. Bless your people, I pray. Cover them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together for the benediction. The clock was moved. I could see it. It is right back there. We're on track. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands. Numbers chapter 6. There's, the Word of God is a powerful tool over your life. It fights for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, 